Hello everyone, today I am with Scott McIntyre and this is On The Spot Interviews. Well, it is so great to meet you. I'm so happy that I'm able to meet and interview you for my American Idol alumni series. So how is it going? You just got to LA. Yes, just got to LA yesterday from Nashville, uh, where my wife and I live now. And I'm excited, you know, it's, it's the final finale. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. But I, you know, I think it's it really had a great run, 15 seasons, and I'm sure for you it was just an amazing experience getting to the top 10, going on tour, you know, just everything that comes with that. So I know I'm sure you get this question all the time, but tell us about that experience just in general and anything you took away from it that you still think about today. You know, I think you mentioned the top 10 and and uh, getting past that point for me in the show was really a special moment. I remember the night that I made top 10 and uh, I know last year they did a little bit of a smaller tour, not as many contestants, yeah, but you know, back back in the day of Idol, that was, that was the tour, it was the top 10 and you knew if you made that cut that you were doing what all of us I think came there to do was, was to, to make music out in the real world without the the Michael Jackson week or country week without the judges, just, just us and the audience and singing music that we really believed in. And that, that was such an exciting night for me because I knew I was going to be a, you know, playing in all those arenas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, I saw you in San Diego and I thought you did amazing. So I'm sure that, that you know, being able to be on the show and go on tour was just an amazing experience. I'm sure you made lots of connections, um, you know, got closer with uh, the other contestants, so I have to ask, who do you keep in touch with the most from your season? Most from my season, I probably keep in touch with Danny the most, and I uh, have a lot of friends from my season, a lot of friends from other seasons as well. I've tried to go back and kind of, um, you know, cheer on the, the new the new kids each each season and meet them, but uh, Danny actually sang on my yeah, latest album. We did a duet together, so that was really cool, and he's just uh, he's just a great guy. We We really have fun together. Well, that's so great to hear. I love that you're still keeping in touch with him. And of course, you also did a song with Skylar. So how was that experience? Yeah, you know, that was that was really fun. I remember watching watching in quotes because I I hear, mm -hmm. you know, being blind. But I remember watching Skylar on American Idol and just just really enjoying her her performances. And I had this song called With This Ring that I wrote for my wife. Um, I wrote it before we were married, but now my wife, Christina, and uh, and I was I was getting ready to cut it for the album and uh, I, I started thinking man what if what if this was a duet I, I really hear um, someone else singing this with me and so I talked to a few different people and Skylar uh, just did an amazing job on with this ring and it's it's by the way if anyone's getting married out there Ooh. it's a great first dance song is it okay. <laughs> a couple people have used it wow. for that but it's just she just brought a really special element to it and our, our voices blended really well I think yeah, well, that's great to know. I mean, I'm many years down the line from getting yes. married, but I will definitely remember that. I didn't mean you, but I know, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> but no, now, now you got me thinking you about that in like ten away. years or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hang on to that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, um, of course, uh, since American Idol, you've continued to inspire many people, not just fans who are your fans of the show, but you know, a ton of people with um, your book. So, can you tell us about that? Yeah, I wrote a book called By Faith, Not By Sight which um, I, I love the title because it's, it's really the story of my life. You know, I, I literally don't have my sight and so I'm, you know, walking around in, in the dark, literally. But uh, it's a great metaphor for, I think, sometimes how, how life comes at us and we, we're surrounded with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of decisions that we find out are outside of our control. And sometimes it comes down to taking that next step of faith without knowing where your foot is going to land and and that's a reality for me literally um but but it's a great metaphor for how i live i live life i've dealt with a lot of um, adversity growing up blind but then when i was when i was 19 i found out that my kidneys were failing and never talked about that on american idol but that was kind of something i had just come through right before i auditioned for american idol i received my first kidney transplant and uh, it saved my life. And I went from not being able to make music, I was so sick, to, uh, to making music on American Idol on that huge stage. And so um, my time on Idol really meant even a lot more to me because of that. Mm -hmm. 
And those are opposite sides of the spectrum, you know, going from not being able to even play the piano to playing it for, you know, millions of people. So that's a huge accomplishment. And, you know, you just had your second kidney transplant um, yeah. last year, and now you're, you know, you're great. So. Yeah, you know, every time I, I, I come through one of these obstacles, I, I feel like I'm, I'm stronger on the other side, you know, and whether it's, it's uh, a physical challenge like I'm dealing with or whether people are dealing with a, uh, um, maybe, maybe it's a broken relationship or it's a, or it's a loss of a loved one or whatever the trial is in your life. You know, everything that I do, I hope my music, the, the book, um, when I speak to people, I always want to encourage people that you, you can reach your dreams. You really can reach your dreams in spite of any obstacle. And, uh, my faith has been, been really important to me in that regard. And that's why, uh, why I wanted to write the book and why I continue to to encourage people to move forward. Yeah, well, and I think it's so cool that you have the book as kind of a second outlet or catalyst um, to reach an audience. But besides that, you know, you also play on the radio a lot, on the message a, a lot with, um, for, you know, the Christian audience. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. One of your songs was number one. That's pretty cool. Thank you. You know, um, I've had a couple singles out now from the most recent album. The album's called Lighthouse. And uh, the current single that's out right now is called Remarkable. And uh, we just just surpassed 900 stations that are playing it, and uh, it's just you know it's it's a message about um, your the the worth of each of us. Sometimes when you're going through life and people people say things about you, I think we've all dealt with this. But it's really easy to just start to to give in oh, to God. the to the narrative that says you know you're hopeless and your circumstance is hopeless and you're you're not worth uh, you're not worth much. But uh, but God actually says that you are worth so much to him you know he because he created you and he loves you in that way and that's that's what i believe at least so that's that's something that i i wanted to to give to people in this song so that when they're you know when the world tears you down when the world says this or that about you you can know uh, that you were made in god's image and that truly is remarkable it's, it's something special about you and i think once i realized that in my life then then nothing else really mattered all of a sudden Simon's comments didn't hurt so much you know <laughs> oh I love that I love that no but it's it's so true yeah well um yeah. He, he was pretty nice to me but you know still yeah. still well I mean on a serious note I think it's amazing and wonderful that you um you know would use your presence from the show to you know reach the greater good and help people who are hurting and on a less serious note that's very funny what you said about <laughs> Simon do you have any quote specifically you remember that he said to you that you were just like what you know I, I can't think of a specific one but I I made fun of him every night on the American Idol tour and I because I would talk about you remember my high five with Ryan Seacrest yes. that didn't quite work out yes. but it you know but we redeemed it later in the show and then I would so I'd be on on tour telling the high five story and then I would I would say um there's also someone I don't love quite as much from the show and I'd hold the mic out and everyone would say Simon it was absolutely horrible. Wow. Which you probably remember because you were yes. there in San Diego. Yes. Okay, that was the that's the best impersonation <laughs> I've ever heard someone do of Simon. And I, I had a lot of time to work on it, so you know. <laughs> but still, credit to you. And I I'm not gonna lie, I've watched the compilations on YouTube of like Simon Cow funniest moments. And you have to admit sometimes it is funny, right? It's funny. I, I have this image still stuck in my, my mind. I remember uh, he he used to make a lot of references to dying cats or yeah. cats thrown off of a building or you know it's pretty mean to cats I don't, I don't know oh it is yeah yeah is. <laughs> so um of course we covered american idol and your um current projects and what you're uh, doing for your audience but um i'd also like to ask you do you have any other projects coming up like tour wise can people expect to you know see you on the road again soon yeah i'm actually uh now that i'm through uh the second kidney transplant i've, I've made a full recovery which I'm so thankful for. And, and by the way, I actually got to meet my kidney donor um, six, six weeks after the surgery. Um, I, I went through the transplant not knowing who it was that was saving my life, was, you know, complete stranger. Mm -hmm. And then six weeks later, I got to say thank you in person and meet her. And um, that was a really special moment to me. But uh, it's, it's really exciting to be through that health crisis now and be, be back on the road again. We have a lot of uh, tour dates in April. I'm actually doing a lot 
in April for um, organ donation because April is Donate Life Month. And so we're going to be uh, several places in California. We're going to be up in Canada. We're going to be in Arizona, in um, Illinois after that. So, so lots of exciting stuff going on. That's exciting. Yeah, I saw on your website you have the um, link um, there for people to donate for, you know, organ donor. Yeah, stuff. you know, if, I mean, anytime I share this story, I always think, you know, if, if, uh, if, if my donor did this for me and I can tell people about what she did and just how it changed my life and how it, it she literally saved my life it's the second time that i've received this gift of life if that can inspire one other person out there to do the same for someone else i mean that's that's incredible and it's it's a very personal decision so i could never tell anyone to to do that or you know assume that they would but it's, it's just it's such an amazing gift and i had a living donor but uh, you don't have to you don't have to donate while you're living. I mean, even if you just you check the box on your driver's license or you go to 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 register as an organ donor at donatelife.net, you can um, you can give that gift to someone once once you leave this earth, and you can give that gift of life to someone who's still living. So it's a pretty incredible legacy to leave, I think. It really is, and um, like I, I said, I sound like a broken record, but the fact that you, um, you know, are promoting it for everyone is just all the more incredible. So um, I hope that we'll, people will, you know, check out that website along with your own social media. So can we have those yes. usernames? Absolutely. So my website is scottmcintyre.com with the M-A-C-I-N-T-Y-R-E, scottmcintyre.com. And uh, Twitter is at Scott D. McIntyre. Facebook is Scott Mac Official. And uh, lots, of, lots of cool videos and photos from the, from the finale week will be up there. And uh, I also I started a podcast last year where I'm actually bringing other people on who have incredible stories, inspirational stories. It's called Two Blind Men. Okay. And I'm one of the two blind men. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, you can link to that on my website also. Okay, so it's all there. That's easy it's enough then. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for your time. And I have one more question slash request. Okay. So um, being the person of nostalgia that I am, I got this People magazine, and it's the American Idol special, and it has every oh, season, cool. every contestant. So I thought you should sign it since you're part of my series. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there is, I would love let me to. get you the pen. Yeah. There you go. And just show me. And then like right here. Right about, right about here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Perfect. Fancy. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave it open because Sharpies take a long time to dry, I feel like. Thank you so much for your time. I've been wanting to interview for quite some time now, so I'm really happy it worked out. Thank you. So nice to meet Thank you. you. And thanks for doing this. Oh, of course. I'll see you at your next California show. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye.